Hi everyone, got a review for you. What you're looking at here is the Becker BK11, also known as the Becker Necker, created in conjunction with K-Bar. I just put it back in the box so that you guys could see how it looked when I first got it in the mail. So let's open this eye up and have a look. So, this on the side. What you get here is a little product catalog with uh, some of the other knives in K-Bar's line. You get about 7 feet of 550 paracord which is nice because this is marketed as a neck knife you'll lash it through the sheath and hang it from your neck I personally don't like neck knives just because I don't like something slapping me in the chest I think of it more as a belt knife because it's a little bit too large for that and the sheath now I need to talk about the sheath a little bit um, a lot of times I'll see a really great knife but the sheath sucks and I'll pass on the knife because if you have a crappy sheath you're not going to want to carry the knife on you you're going to leave it in your pack or in your car or whatever and even if you buy the knife and you want to get, say, a custom Kydex sheath made for it, that's another 30 40 bucks that you're tacking on top of the total cost. So it's always a great thing if the knife is great and the sheath is great as well. Uh, this is a glass-filled nylon sheath, not Kydex, but it doesn't really matter because it serves the same function. It doesn't absorb water, and it's pretty durable. It's got all these little hole grommets right here for you to lash uh, the paracord through to hang it from your neck if you wanted to. And I don't know if you can see it, this little hole right here at the bottom is a drain hole, so moisture can go through if you get water inside of it. And you can see the logo. The actual knife itself, just remove it from this little cardboard slip right here, is made out of 1095 Crovan steel, which is uh, just 1095 tool steel with uh, chromium and vanadium added to it. It is a drop point style blade and the blade itself is full flat ground. Like so. See if you can see that. It just goes straight down in the blade. And the edge degree angle is 15 degrees. It weighs about 2.4 ounces and the uh, overall length is 6.75 inches. The actual cutting edge is 3 and a quarter inches. Uh, Rockwell hardness is measured between 56 and 58 and uh, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, and it has a great epoxy coating. See, 1095 is a tool steel, so unlike a stainless steel, if you leave this in moisture, it will rust, but this epoxy coating is going to help uh, protect it. You should still wipe it down and oil it um, after you use it, but the epoxy coating will help. For the design, you'll look here at the bottom. There is a bottle opener, so that's pretty useful. And this little notch right here is a wire cutter, so you would stick wire in here and then just twist it back and forth until the wire breaks. The handle is skeletonized to save you some weight, and these holes right here are the exact same size as 550 paracord in case you want to wrap the handle. I want to get to the handle. In terms of the handle, I think I wish they would just raise the total price of the knife and just included handle scales that you can screw on through these holes with torque screws. Just because uh, paracord is great, but it is porous. And if you wrap this in paracord, it's going to absorb moisture and say if you're working in a dirty environment, like if you drop this in mud, or if you're cutting meat, it'll get absorbed into the paracord and eventually you're going to have to cut it out and use fresh paracord to wrap versus uh, handle scales. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, it doesn't have to be G10 or micarta, just some cheap, simple plastic scales would work just as fun well, you know, so that's fine. Uh, the blade thickness is 0.165 inches, so it's pretty thick, and uh, as you see, the blade doesn't taper until like the very tip. So it's a pretty stout blade. I wouldn't mind like doing a little bit of light prying, and uh, even though the blade is a bit short, I wouldn't really mind batoning this into a piece of wood. I mean, it, it feels pretty sturdy. Uh, another hit I'll give this is, uh, well, it's actually a good thing, is the sheath is designed to work with the TDI belt clip which can be bought separately by K-Bar and I actually bought it because I don't like want to wear this as a neck knife I want to wear this on my belt see here belt clip fits right there and it comes with torque screws so you can screw it on and if you'll notice here the clip is well designed you see this little uh, I'll just use the knife as a pointer see if I can get that see that little thing I'm pointing at right there that little notch at the bottom that's uh, coming in towards the sheath that's great because when you pull this out of the sheath this is going to catch onto your belt and the sheath stays where it is while the knife keeps going so the sheath is actually well designed the unfortunate part is this is sold separately so you're going to have to spend money on the sheath I mean on the clip I'm sorry and also on shipping on this I would have preferred they raise the total price of the package and just included the clip uh, to save a little bit of money but as it is this is a good package also wish they had raised the price a little bit and added the handle skills as I said before uh, the knife is very ergonomic uh, I have small hands and I can just about fit my pinky onto it to get a full purchase. All my other friends, though, 
have larger size hands and they have their pinky dangling, but uh, they say that it's pretty comfortable when they hold it and uh, they don't feel like uh, this is pinching into their palm at all. Uh, some people I've heard when reading online reviews have said they've had that problem, but it's one of those things where you have to pick up the knife yourself and see how you feel about it. Uh, I find this comfortable. Uh, this is actually marketed and compared against the Rat Izula, which is another neck knife, and they actually think the Izula is uh, more comfortable. Now, I actually have a martial arts training knife, which pretty much has the same outline as it. It just doesn't have this little bump right here at the bottom, and I can say that I do prefer having this little outline. Uh, I'm not saying this is an uncomfortable knife. This is very comfortable. This just happens to be a little bit more comfortable. But as it is, um, this design is fine. If I had a choice though, I would have uh, recommended that they got rid of this little hump right here. Uh, I feel that I would just control this knife just fine. Another thing I would have liked is I wish they would have put jimping on the back spine of this knife. Uh, partly for having more control of it, but also because if this is going to be used as a hard use outdoor knife and camping knife, when you have jimping on the back, you can use it as a striker against a magnesium rod in case you use, uh, you lose this little striker that comes with it. So, I mean, it's kind of nice that you can use the back of the blade. As it is, um, I haven't tried using the back of this blade yet, and plus I don't want to scratch up the epoxy coating. Uh, speaking of rat cutlery, I think this is actually a smaller, more affordable competitor to the Rat RC3, even though that sounds kind of weird. Actually, let me just point at my computer screen right here and see if I can get you a better view. Uh, I had to invert the colors, so this is actually a black blade, but this is a picture that is to scale. This is eight and a quarter inches, and this is how big the Rat RC3 would look. And if you actually compare it, yes, this has a smaller handle, and this looks like it has a smaller blade, but if you'll notice, the blade isn't completely cutting edge. You have this large twirl right here. The actual cutting edge of the RC3 is about three and a half inches, whereas the cutting edge on this is three and a quarter inches. So you only have a quarter of an inch more cutting space on the RC3. The handle will be more comfortable, but I don't find that's a problem just because I have small hands and I can get around. Uh, the other thing is, whereas the RC3 has uh, an eighth of an inch thickness in blade, so 0.125, this is actually 0.165, so this is actually thicker, so I would expect this to be a little bit sturdier. Um, but don't get me wrong, I love the RC3, I mean if I had the money I would totally get one, but Compared to the Becker Necker, I think this is actually a better value in terms of how much money you spend and the, how much knife that you get in return. And that brings me to the price. Uh, for the knife and the sheath, no belt clip, you're going to be spending about $35 free shipping on Amazon.com. That's an incredible bargain that you're getting a 1095 full flat ground epoxy coated blade with a great sheath for $35. Um, that's just an incredible bargain. I mean, you don't run into that very often in the knife world. Uh, you're going to be spending a little bit more. The belt clip retails for about, I think, $15, but if you hunt around, you can probably find it uh, used or at discount for about $10 to $12. So that does add, bring up the final price to about $50, but even if you're okay with carrying this as a neck knife or throwing this in your pack, $35 for this quality of blade is an incredible deal. Uh, I just think it's great. Uh, another thing I should talk about before I let you guys go is some people have complained that this the sheath retains onto the knife a little bit too hard. You'll notice here you have this little notch right here that fits into this bump. If you push it in all the way, hear that little click, it's really hard to get this knife out. Uh, I actually have to pull pretty hard to pull this out. Uh, what I've found though is if you put this in but not all the way, just enough so that it clicks right behind it, uh, it's fine. This gives a pretty good level of retention. It's not going to rattle or anything like that and you can see I'm shaking it pretty hard and that's fine. You can pull the knife pretty easily. Uh, if you think you're going to be getting into a lot of like uh, motion or movement and you really don't want it, you can just push it in all the way till it clicks and that's fine. But as it is, the retention is fine if you just go into the first click like so. Easy to pull out the knife. That's just like a little tip if you get this sheath and you're wondering why it's so hard to pull it out. And plus over time it's going to get loosened up uh, as you're putting it in and pulling it out. So yeah, great deal, $35. I mean, you can't really find a deal this good nowadays. Uh,
Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, just finished adding all these little attachments to the Becker Necker, as you can see here on this sheath. I added the TDI belt clip, and I put it on this side because I am right-handed. And uh, basically, what I would do is I would clip this over my jeans, but under my belt, and have this clip over the belt. Uh, if you put the clip on the other side, and then you try to clip it where uh, the the clip is on this side, and it's just over your belt. I find that it's going to tilt in with the handle leaning in and pressing up against your body. Uh, if you have it over your pants but underneath your belt, this is going to be completely vertical. It's still going to ride pretty close though against your body, so that's something to keep in mind, especially with a paracord. And as you can see, I added a paracord to the handle, makes it much more comfortable. It doesn't really add an appreciable amount of width to the blade. Uh, the reason I chose to use this paracord and not the included black one is because uh, I'm, this is going to be a general purpose knife and I chose orange because it's a bright color and if I drop the knife it's going to be easy to find it. If it had a black paracord or a uh, green handle uh, it'll be much harder to find if I drop this in the woods so go with the orange. And also I made sure that there was some extra length so that I could tie it off and have a lanyard so I can fit my hands through this and that way I'll have less chance of dropping it. But for this video, it's not just for showing you how this looks with uh, the clip and the paracord. I also wanted to show you this. Um, I was uh, wrapping paracord on the handle and I accidentally pulled this out of the sheath while I was holding it like this and it sliced across uh, my middle finger. Now, when I first got this knife, you know, I did what everybody with a new knife does. You know, you do the paper cutting thing and then you shave like the hair off your arm and stuff like that. But uh, I wanted to show you this just because um, I was holding the sheath and I this got caught on my uh, pinky and I pulled the whole knife out and it just sliced across my finger right here. It's about a half inch cut. But the thing that really fascinated me about this was um, yeah this is sharp enough to cut through paper easily uh, right out of the box and it's hair shaving sharp right out of the box. But the fact that after I, it, I felt this go across my finger um, I just stared at my finger for like three seconds and nothing happened and then it started to bleed and I've never had that happen. In fact, this is the first time I've gotten cut and not felt any pain. I'm used to being cut all the time and getting scratches and stuff, but I'm still looking at this cut and waiting for it to hurt and it's not. Uh, in fact, the only way I know that there's a cut at all is because of the blood. Uh, when I wipe it, like I can't even see where the cut is, so this thing is wicked sharp right out of the box. So, just wanted to shoot this video and let you guys know. So, anyways, that's my little add-on addition to my review of the Becker Necker. Thanks for watching guys and have a good day.